Hello and welcome back. This is a continuation of the video I did about keyboard shortcuts, where we learned about why it is really useful to get familiar with whatever editor, for example, you're using, whatever tool you're using, not only to make you faster, but to also reduce cognitive load. And we, of course, used NeoVim as an example. But this was only part of a bigger talk I gave on these three tools you can see on your screen right now. And I didn't even talk about the other two. So let's give you a little live demonstration of how we can combine everything here and why you might want this. So first up, uh, Quarto, if you're not familiar with it, it's sort of the next iteration of our markdown, which allows us to write our thoughts, our analysis right next to our code, and then compile everything in reproducible documents. For example, in our studio, you might have this panel down here where you have your code chunks, and then you also have your text, and it all gets rendered into this report. And this is also super useful if you are catering to different output formats or you are submitting scientific research to journals and they all have different requirements. So it's very nice and easy to combine these. All you need is a single source of truth document from which you can generate all your other formats. And in the line of what we talked about in the last video about reducing cognitive load, because you have your thought right next to your analysis, it is a lot easier to come back to it to also temporarily forget about things because you have written them down so you can focus on other things that are currently more important. But of course, the bigger your analysis gets, the more unwieldy a notebook becomes. And mode notebooks are not really meant for really, really large analyses and for data analysis that also takes a long time to execute. And this is where targets comes in one of my favorite R packages out there. And what it does is you define your intermediate R objects and outputs and targets in a file combined with your functions that generate these targets. And it then checks that everything's up to date and only re-renders the stuff it needs in order for you to get it working. So let's actually jump straight in and see how this looks like. Yeah, and here we are in this example demo document in NeoVim. We have our header our front matter, we have some text, and we also have these code chunks. So let's open up an R terminal so we can actually execute the code. This is what it looks like. We are loading the targets package, which you could have installed by just running install.packages targets. And we are loading the tidyverse because that's always very useful. Um, now, the first thing you want to do when you use targets for the first time in your project is run tar script. We don't need to do this every time. This is why it's set to eval false. It's just showing you here once. And what this does, it creates this underscore targets file. And this is what I created, but it's very similar to the default example you will see. I define a function here, which I use down here then to take this data set, the penguins data set from the Palma penguins data, uh, data package or R package. And I use it to clean the penguins. And we are also defining an additional targets, targets for the colors we are using in our plot later on. Now, once we have these targets, all we have to do is write tar make and execute it. And you can see here in the console that it actually skipped all our targets because it was everything already up to date. We can verify this by calling tar with network, which is something I actually like to use and keep in my quarter document because it will also tell my reader how everything is related. Now you can see that we are starting off with the penguins and this clean data function is used. So the penguins clean target is dependent on the clean data and the penguins data set. And that means because it's dependent on it, if I jump into it and if I change this function here, maybe I, this of course will be wrong, but let's just change the function. And let's run tar with network again. You can see now because this function changed, let's make this full screen for now. You can see these nodes are both outdated, which means now if I run tar make, it will recompute the outdated nodes. So here we go. It is built, has built these targets. Now I, of course, now introduce an error by fixing it like this. So let's. Go back here and do it again. 
and visualize the network again. Now we are up to date again. And now we can work in our Quarto document with these files using simply tar load. So if I run this, I now have, have access to the penguins, for example. So I can use my usual methods, like for example, I want to visualize it quickly by making a table from it. And I can, can work with it here. And I can also work with it interactively. This is super handy. I can make a plot, move it over here, iterate on this plot. Maybe I want to build a model, close this plot here. I've now built this Nova model as an example. Maybe I want to get into the summary of it, do a post-talk test, all that kind of things. Now this Nova model is like super fast because it's just a, a linear model on a very small data set. But let's imagine for a second, we have either a really big analysis where lots of things depend on each other that you want to also understand to free up your mind to think about the thing you're currently working on or, or and, you have a model that takes a long time to compute. Maybe this is a big machine learning model or maybe big tidy models. Well, in that case, we, we wouldn't want this to execute every time we quarto render our report. So this is what our report currently looks like. But if this were a big model and we just wanted to change some, some of the text or maybe a plot, we don't want to, the model to be rendered every single, like to be calculate every single time that we execute our report. And this is where targets really shines. So now we are still in this mode of working directively, but what we can do is very quickly convert this into a target. So let's go in here and just go uh, CI3, which stands for change inside code cell. And I want to replace this with tar load ANOVA model. Now this doesn't exist yet, but we need to go into our targets file. And because I changed this previously, it deleted it and puts it into my paste buffer. So what I, what I can do is go down here, insert it. And then now I need to make it a target, right? So let's add a comma here, tar target. Take this and let's go to here. This is almost correct. I think it's already correct. We just need to replace the assignment with a comma because the first argument is the name of the target and the second argument is how you make the target. And it, this is really cool for, for, from targets. It automatically understands that because penguins clean is mentioned here and it's mentioned here, this target depends on the other thing. So it, it has a static code analysis of how everything is related, which is really, really handy. So it's not just based on if a file is changed, it's really based on if, 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 the, if what the function does or if what the symbol represents changes. So let's go back to here. And now I can actually run tar load. And why is it already working? I think it shouldn't be working because I have not actually built the pipeline. So I'm assuming this is working right now because I had built it previously and I didn't delete the cache. Um, let's still uh, run tar make here and now I build the ANOVA model and I can load it. And because I loaded it, I can have access to it here. So now if I preview our document, it will run our code, but doing this part will not recompute our model. It will just be loaded from our updated targets pipeline. Okay, and, and there we have it. This is my favorite way of combining working interactively with also managing complex projects. So if you are interested in that kind of stuff, stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next one.